hello everybody welcome to my channel um i'm gonna be honest and say that honestly this weekend i had to do my hair okay i had to braid my own hair which takes days and days and days and you know i'm sitting at work today and i'm like i feel like i'm forgetting something sure enough <laughs> so so sorry <laughs> sure enough i forgot to give you guys the recap for teen mom episode number seven so here we are the name of this episode is what are we going to do about him and let's go right ahead and get started brianna says that she is still adjusting to her mom being in rehab she says that she's not getting as much help as she used to she loves the new house but their school the girls school is so far away from the house brianna says that devoin helps when he can and devoin was picking the kids up but the other day he texted brianna saying that he wanted to put them on the school bus and he'd rather pay than to make that drive to pick up the girls brianna says with her mom being gone she's really not trying to change up the girls routine too much brianna says that she's getting sick and tired of having to be the one basically to tell devoin how he's supposed to be and be as far as being a father being an active present father devoin brings the girls to the house and um she's talking to devoin and like you know you brought up the fact that you know the drive is a bit much for you what can we do to work this out brianna says to devoin that i took your text message in a bad way it kind of hurt my feelings devoin i understand where you're coming from okay gas is expensive and it's tiring to drive i don't drive i'm just saying i just know by looking at you guys but devoin is saying if the bus is an option why not utilize it and i agree it could make actually could make it easier for you brianna because you know every day the bus is gonna come they're gonna drop the kids off it's not gonna be a situation where devoin's like oh sorry can't pick up the kids today you know at least with the bus you have some kind of security he says if the girls are comfortable with that then he you know would prefer to do that and brianna says you know the girls understand brianna is basically talking about how frustrating it has to be for a kid that you know when her mom was there it took 10 minutes to get home now it's taking 20 minutes now it's probably going to take even longer brianna says to devoin that we need to figure something out because if you put them on the bus when are you going to spend time with them and brianna says that is your time to spend with them when you're picking them up and he said yeah but he says when he picks the girls up he has to leave his house at 2 30. devoin says by the time we get back to the house it's already 5 30. Devoin says that him coming back so late with the girls is cutting into his time here. Brianna says, and if the girls are not comfortable with being on the bus, then it's something I'm going to continue to have to do. Devoin says, and then we're back to the drawing board. And Brianna says, well, what happens when we both have to work? Okay, then you go, you find someone outside who can pick the girls up. Very simple. I mean, we've all done it. All of us with children, we made a way. A lot of us were single parents for a minute and we make it freaking work okay i can't pick them up somebody else has to pick them up as simple as that brianna says that basically she's tired of always being the one to have to make the sacrifice devoin says that he can't afford to make sacrifices when his money is involved he can't just say okay i'm gonna take today off blah 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 which understandable and brianna says do you think i can and i mean y'all really not making a lot of money on mtv that's what i've come to the conclusion of Devoin says, no, I'm not saying that you can afford it as well. I'm just saying if I don't work, I'm going to end up in the streets. If he's in the streets, he can't do anything for them at all. And Brianna, you better be glad he's not just saying, OK, I'm only taking care of Nova, because honestly, that is his only obligation. But emotionally, he's, he's obligated himself to little Stella. OK, ma'am, you own a house and he's probably living in an apartment you can afford to be like okay i'm gonna stay home and i'm not gonna work probably i don't know for sure because like i said money seems to be very tight on this show as of lately brianna says she will get in contact with the buses and devoin says you know talk to the girls and if it's something they don't want to do then they'll have to figure out something else devoin says by no means is he saying that if they, they decide that they don't want to take the bus he's not going to be around for them anymore he says that he's not saying that I really believe that Brianna be really, really 
portraying Devoin as this terrible, terrible person and this horrible father when he's the only one that I see consistently on this show. And frankly, I'm getting sick of it, okay? I don't know if it's colorism. But I don't know. I'm going to bring it up. I don't care. I don't know if she just, I don't know why she's expecting oh so much from him now. Granted, every woman wants a good father for their children, but where's Lewis? Is he not doing more than Lewis is? So I don't understand why you're so hard on him. And what he's saying right now does make sense. The man has to work, you have to work. So then if both of you have to work, then you need to find a solution that does not prohibit either one of you from working. And then Devoin says to Brianna, we will figure it out. Corey Taylor and the children are moving into their neighborhood. Yes, into Cheyenne and Zach's neighborhood. Cheyenne says that she's happy about it because it'll make co-parenting with Ryder a lot easier. They're only about five minutes away. Now Cheyenne, Ryder, her mom, and I think that's her dad or her stepdad, child, I don't remember. Anyway, they're all going to go take a look at Corey and Taylor's new house. Now, don't think I forgot that Taylor was crying and boo-hoo-hooing at Teen Mom Family Reunion because Corey would not marry her. But you're over here making a happy home, literally buying a house with Corey, living like y'all are our married couple. Why in the hell would he ever need to pop the question to you? Um, I kind of didn't realize that I wasn't on camera all that time. Now, you know, they had to have a scene where all of the guys are agreeing to this get together. Pretty much they're going to be skiing and drinking. And that's all I gathered from this information that they gave us. Harry is here with Christina and he's talking about this guy's get together. And he says, maybe Amber's Gary should go. Is he a father? Has he put in his time on Team Mom? Then no, he shouldn't go. For what? Why would he be there? Gary says that he's spoken to Amber. He sent her a text saying, look, you gotta, you gotta talk to freaking Leah, okay? And as you can see here, I can barely read it, but I'm gonna read it for you right now for those of you that can't see that well on the screen. Amber claims that she's texted Leah a million times and she gets no answer, nothing ever back she says that she's done everything in her power to be in her life i'd be adding okay i'd be paraphrasing so sorry um she's done everything in her power to be in her life and she's gotten no she's gotten nothing she says she never gets to spend time with her she's excluded from all of her schooling and i wonder why how did you behave at leah's birthday dinner amber did you apologize did you acknowledge what you did was wrong no you didn't well, I didn't finish the entire um, message that Amber sent. She's tired of fighting for attention from everyone. Amber, if you were a good mother, you would never have to fight for attention from your own child. Amber says she's a loving mother. You are? how you literally called your daughter a dick on her birthday i mean did you do you want to go back and watch the recap but i need mtv to get rid of your ass off the show because i'm tired of talking about you you are a terrible excuse for a mother actually and um you basically said in this text message that you give up on your daughter you give up on your daughter yet you're all for this relationship and want to push for this relationship with gary the other gary Christina says this is very shocking to her, okay? And we can tell by the look on your face, girl. And Gary says that he's not told Leah about this. He doesn't know how the hell he's gonna approach the situation. Gary's like, if he tells Leah this situation, you know, Christina's like, that's like letting her know that her mom really just honestly just doesn't care. Gary says Leah is already at that point and I know what Leah needs. And he says, Leah needs her mom. Even if your child is pushing you away, you don't just turn your back on them and give up on them. Gary says, Leah wants a mom who is not selfish. Sorry, I, I didn't know what I was going to say there. Um, Gary says that Leah wants a mom who's not selfish. Christina says that she's the one that does all the motherly things with Leah. Sorry, I said motherly very weird because, uh, you know, braces anyway. Christina says she's the one that does all of the motherly things with Leah. She goes to all her events. 
All, whatever she needs her at, whenever she needs her, she's there. Christina says no matter how much she does, she cannot fill the void of Leah's mom. Christina says that she can be the motherly figure, but Leah still has that space where Amber is supposed to be. Gary says that he thinks that all of this is going to weigh on Leah for the rest of her life. If any of you care, which I don't, but whatever. If any of you care where they're going, they're just going to Michigan. They're not going to the Alps. They're not going any place special. Sorry, Michigan. No offense. They're just going to Michigan. So this is going to be the easiest recap I do this week. Yay. So now we're going to find out what's going on with everybody. We already know. Okay, y'all y'all been watching my recaps. So Taylor's dealing with a driving teenager. Gary says that Amber has not seen Leah since her birthday. The guys are shocked and surprised. Tyler says that he cannot go more than three days without speaking to his girls. Corey asks Gary if that's Leah's choice not to see her mom. Zach asks Gary if the relationship between Leah and Amber is fixable. Gary says what Leah needs right now is consistency from Amber. And Tyler's like, you know, to build that trust, that's what you need. And thank you, Corey. Got some brains in that head sometimes, okay? And Corey says, that's not up to Leah to forge that. That's on Amber. That's totally on Amber, exactly. So Gary says it's never gonna be Leah's fault as to why Amber and her have this relationship. It's always gonna be Amber. Honestly, guys, I was not going to watch this little vacation, okay? Because I thought they were just gonna be skiing and talking crap and drinking, but they're actually talking some stuff right now that is interesting and pertains to the show, so I have to talk about it. Gary says so many times he tried his best not to throw Amber under the bus, Tyler said, can we stop doing that? Can we just F the bus and just, you know, if the bus gonna roll over somebody's face, just let it roll over their faces, okay? Basically, the guys agree that, you know, once Leah sees that she doesn't care, the relationship is a wrap, it's done with. The guys say that they're thankful that Christina's there, at least, and Gary says the best thing that ever happened to Leah was Christina. Gary drops a bomb and that bomb is that Leah wants to be adopted by Christina. Y'all know Amber is not gonna let that freaking happen. Even though, as you can see, she's already given up on Leah. She wants nothing to do with her. She's not gonna try to contact her anymore. All these different excuses as to why she should just give up on her daughter. I promise you, as soon as she finds out that Leah wants to be adopted by Christina, it's gonna be a whole nother mother freaking story. Gary says that Christina would in a heartbeat and Zach says, does Amber know? Gary says, no, Amber does not know. Tyler, you got a big mouth. Nobody told you to run to your wife and tell her that. Amber doesn't even know. So Amber's gonna basically find out from somebody else because of your big mouth. He asked Caitlyn if she's spoken to Amber and thought about her, so she sent her a little text or whatever. And Tyler's like, yeah, there's a situation that Gary brought up where Leah wants to be adopted by Christina. So Tyler lets Caitlyn know that Amber doesn't know and Caitlyn says that Gary needs to tell her. First of all, Gary should tell her on his time. It wasn't up to Tyler to open his big fat mouth to his wife and tell her the situation. Kate says that when Amber does find out, it's going to be extremely triggering for her. Kate says that Gary might need some extra support. Kate says it's going to be hard for Gary because he's such a people pleaser. And Tyler's like, let Amber own her own crap. Don't worry about trying to cover or protect her. So we're back with Brianna and she's explaining to the girls that this is very difficult for the both of them being that the school's so far and it's really hard for her nova for nova's dad to be traveling so far and wants to know would they be okay with taking the bus and after brianna says i was wondering if you guys would be okay taking the school bus look at nova's face she's not trying to hear that nova has grown up so much that it really makes me feel like an old freaking auntie like nova has grown up so crazily so crazily it's like we remember when she was a baby so she's sitting here and she's telling brianna like I really don't want to take the school bus. It's freaking hot on that bus. Nova says she also doesn't like the fact that there's a lot of people on the school bus. Brianna says that it wouldn't be like a regular school bus. It would be a private transportation bus. In that case, girl, I'm on there because that means there's going to be AC on there and I'm not going to have to be around other little brats. So why not? Stella 
does not want to either but honestly i think she only doesn't want to because nova doesn't want to and y'all know how siblings are now i'm all for you caring about your daughter's feelings i promise you i am i'm not a heartless person but kids gotta learn sometimes they gotta have stuff that they don't always want okay and if it's a hard drive for devoin and it's a hard drive for you then i wouldn't even ask them i would just be like i'm really sorry maybe i'm mean i don't know anyway you guys are taking the school bus starting next week. I mean, what do you want? I mean, it's a private bus. This is going to be, you're going to be, you're still going to be living a very lavish life. You're still going to be living a lot better than your, you know, your classmates or whatever. They're going to be on a regular school bus. You're going to be on a freaking private bus. It's going to come pick y'all up, drop y'all off. Like, sounds good to me. Brianna asks Stella, why doesn't she want to take the school bus? And she doesn't even know. Brianna asks, so what do you think we should do? And Nova is so smart. Nova says, well, there's a school over here in our neighborhood. Brianna says, if, you're, if your sister's willing to change schools, are you? And Stella says, yes. Brianna says, we would have to let you guys finish out the school year. I would not want to switch you in the middle of the school year. So now somehow we go from changing schools to Brianna talking about how she was dropping it like it was hot in the club to get that old dusty, musty loser, Lewis. And I, for one, couldn't care less. I am ready to leave this scene before I puke on this keyboard right here why can't y'all shut the hell up like why can't y'all shut the hell up anyway in the next scene we have caitlin and caitlin calls macy so caitlin says to macy did you hear about the situation with gary and amber proceeds to let macy know that leo wants to be adopted gary you should have just kept that to yourself until you told Amber because these people are big mouths and don't know how to shut the hell up, apparently. So Macy asks, is Amber communicating with Leah like she was before? And Caitlin gives that sorry excuse that Amber gave Gary. Oh, I'm reaching out, but I'm not getting anywhere. And Caitlin says it makes her feel like a crappy friend to be sitting on this information and not telling Amber. Why is everybody so concerned about Amber's stupid ass feelings? I'm sorry, but what the hell? And you're worried about being a shitty friend, Caitlin, when your friend, quote friend, Amber, isn't worried about being a shitty parent because that's what she is. That's why she doesn't have custody of either of her children. I can't stand enablers. If your friend is a piece of crap, first of all, they shouldn't be your friend. That's number one. And if you're going to remain friends with a piece of crap, in a way, in a way, it kind of makes you a piece of crap as well. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Macy says that pisses her off that Gary's going around telling people. And Macy, it does, does it piss you off that your friend is a loser ass mother? Does it piss you off that she's not contacting her own daughter, that she's not keeping in contact with her daughter? that she disrespected her daughter at her birthday dinner. I'm not, I'm not gonna forget that. No, that doesn't piss you off. But Gary expressing things going on in his life because it's his life, not just Amber's, is pissing you off. Macy, don't piss me off, okay? You Macy says this is literally like throwing fire on gasoline. So Amber's behavior has never been gasoline to a fire that she set herself. Why is Amber never made to be accountable for anything she does? Why do these women cater to Amber when Amber is obviously a terrible person? She beats people up. She doesn't know how to retain custody of her kids. She's even thinking about having more children, even though she can't manage to keep a child in her life more than five years, more than six years. I'm honestly sickened by all of y'all that are, what is the word? What is the word? I can't think of the word. But you guys are really not making Amber accountable for her behavior. And you guys are okay with dealing with a deadbeat mother. And that's what the hell Amber is. A mother freaking deadbeat mother. Christina should be able to adopt Leah since Amber wants nothing to do with her. Amber can go F herself. Go, go have more babies that she's going to lose custody of as far as I'm concerned talking about as Amber's friend first. How about as a mom first? Maybe you need to put yourself as a mom first and then you'll think logically. 
Amber's friendship comes before the fact that she's a deadbeat mother. Okay, anyway, Macy, you lost some points with me on this episode. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna take you a minute to get them back. Then Macy says that her and Kate may have to be the ones to tell Amber. Tyler, I wish you would have kept your mouth shut. The guys are skiing and I don't care. Devon sending this text message actually to Jade and obviously Jade is gonna tell Brianna. And now they're drinking again. Devon calls Jade and lets her know it was all a joke and now she says she gotta call everybody because she they she basically thought he was airlifted to a hospital. Zach and Cheyenne have a useless conversation. He did not. He did not bring up the Gary and Amber thing. He just was talking about how the trip was going and all this crap. That's pretty much it. All you guys are getting in the hot tub together. Okay, that's not weird. And now Corey is showing his bare ass to the guys. I didn't want to say gay. I wasn't going to use... I wasn't going to use the word gay. I was not. But that's very odd, Corey. That you need these guys to see your butt. Like, I'm sorry. That's weird. So now Devoin is talking about how it's natural for him to pick up Stella as far as like when he picks up Nova or he's always around Nova. So obviously he's going to be around Stella. He's like, that's just how he is. Yet Brianna wants to paint this man like he's the, the worst person in the world. Now they're talking about Lewis and Devoin says that he hasn't seen him for a minute. Devoin says that he would like to spend more time with Nova if Brianna would let him. So Zach asks, what is it that's keeping you from spending that time? And Devoin actually admits that it's him. He says that he's been on this roller coaster of life and I'm gonna need you to get off that roller coaster of life and get on an even plane so that you can be there for your daughter. That's what I need you to do, okay? I know I talk fast sometimes, I'm really sorry. Hopefully you guys can hear what I'm trying to say. So Rihanna and the girls go and they're touring schools. And when they come back, they realize they really like the school. And not only that, it is only 12 minutes away. So that's going to work out for everybody. We get into this conversation. They're, you know, now sitting and eating. And Brianna's like, okay, so we're set on the school and everybody agrees. So she's going to enroll them. And Brianna asks the girls, is there anyone who you don't want picking you up? She asks, is there anyone you don't want picking you up? And I feel like she egged that conversation on. And I'm starting to get tired of reality television, guys. I'm really sorry. Because the way they do things is not, e they're not even trying to hide it now. Like before they used to try to hide it. Now they're just doing it out in the open. So of course, Stella says, yeah, I don't want my dad picking me up. Because so we're back with the guys and they're asking Gary about the Amber situation again. And if he's going to talk to her. And Gary is telling them that he's trying to let Leah take the lead and figure out what she really wants to do make sure that she understands the repercussions of this happening so we're back with brianna and brianna's in the kids room i guess and she finds a book and it says do not like that he won't come and basically we're about to see i swear we're about to see brianna reach out to mother freaking lewis again i swear it we're now here with shirley and brianna and shirley's daughter leilani and where's your son? I know you have a son. And uh, Shirley, I love you, but I'm not really feeling the hair color. I did like the red on you. You look good in the red one. But I don't know about this one, but it's fine. Whatever. So Brianna is telling Shirley about the fact that they are going to change schools. Brianna is talking to Shirley about how all of this was just a lot as far as the traveling and the schools. You know, that's the reason why they're changing schools or whatever. And Shirley asks, how is Lewis? You know, where is he in all of this? and rihanna says that she has not seen lewis in an entire year shirley asks if stella has asked about lewis and brianna shows shirley the 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 writing that she found in stella's book in the room brianna says that she doesn't know what she's going to do because it's such a sensitive and touchy subject brianna says that she knew that it was about to happen because it's been a year and we haven't really talked about it it was bound to come up eventually. Brianna says that she doesn't know how to deal with rejection from Stella's father. She's still dealing with her own rejection from her own father. Brianna says that Stella's growing up and starting to understand how things are in the situation that they have right now. And this is what the guys are doing. And I really wish they wouldn't have taken us on their trip. Just go on a trip and don't tell us about it. Let us just have our own little episode over here. It's so hard to get out what the hell Cheyenne was trying to say. I don't know why y'all talk in circles on this show. Because I, I, I just, I understand you're on television, 
But why can't y'all speak in regular English? Why couldn't you say Ryder was upset and crying and her mom was trying to figure out what the hell was going on? Be glad y'all got me as y'all translator. I'm just saying. They were out at some place with the kids, okay? And some little boy called Ryder the N-word. Why did it take all those words, Cheyenne? Ryder was called the N-word. She was very upset about it. Girl, go have a conversation with your daughter and make her feel better about herself. Let her know there's some evil people in the world. I am done with this recap. First of all, I have a couple of videos coming. Number one, I will be ranking the moms and I have four ways that I will be ranking the moms, the teen moms. I will have its own separate video. Someone in my comment section suggested this weeks ago. And it's just because I've been behind it, I haven't gotten to it, but I am going to do it because I love you guys' ideas. I do not want you to think that your ideas are not important to me. They are, and I will be doing them. Okay. So the second video I will be doing after the ranking video, I want, or before, whenever I'm able to do it, we're going to do life. What is it? Is it life after lockup? What is the name of that lady? Child, I forgot. I forgot, but the, the, the lady that killed her mama, that lady, I forgot. Anyway. I have to catch you up on inmate to roommate the teen mom i'm caught up now thank you very much but there's a new episode coming again thursday y'all killing me with these thursday shows y'all killing me with these thursday shows anyway guys thank you so much for watching my channel make sure you like comment and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye